Let's talk about NBA news here. I saw Charles Barkley say something hilarious. Uh, he said, the idiots at the other network, okay, I think he's talking about ESPN, keep talking like the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors have a chance. Shaq checked them immediately, was like, they have the play-in. And then Chuck, the play-in's not real, is what Charles Barkley said immediately. Now, Charles Barkley's one of the greatest speakers of all time. Anytime he talks, yeah. I will listen. The Miami Heat were in a play-in game, and then they make it to the final. So there is a chance to go from potentially on the bubble all the way in there. But what are your thoughts on all that? Are the Lakers and Golden State dead? Is this something that you and ESPN are just pushing mm. because LeBron James does numbers on the Sports Center Instagram account, Perk? What, 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 let me say this. Okay. First thing first, okay? Charles Barkley is not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> okay? That's number one. What is that? Every, Whoa. Every, every, everything that comes out of his mouth is not the gospel. Now, he's an all-time great. He has done a hell of a job in the media world, and I respect him like crazy. But here's the thing. We're going to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, and we're going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. You know why? Because they have LeBron James, who <laughs> is arguably the greatest to ever touch the damn basketball. And you have Steph Curry, who is a generational talent and a top 10 all-timer. Okay? And we have to appreciate them. Because when both of those guys are gone, what else are we going to talk about? We can't talk about them. So the fact of the matter is, is that they're both, what, four or five games above 500. So they're a really good basketball team. They just happen to be in the Western Conference. And the playoffs started right after the All-Star break in the Western Conference. So we're talking about these play-in games because it matters. Can you imagine this? Imagine a world this postseason without having Steph Curry or LeBron James. Oh. Like, we, we can't do that. We can't. Like, so no. we need one of them to make it. The need, world needs it. So need it, Chuck. I think with Charles... I get what Charles is saying. Do I think they're going to make noise either one of those teams in the postseason? Hell no. But at the end of the day, we have to appreciate who the hell is on that team. I agree. That's Steph I, and that's Braun. I agree completely. I understand exactly what you're saying. I also understand what he was saying in this entire thing yeah. because, like, whenever you're doing full day show all day, yeah. every day, like, LeBron's going to get talked about. Yeah, of you know, course. And, and that's like just how it's always been. And Steph earned his way quickly into being a guy that's always going to be talked about. Now, with that being said, with generational talent, potentially greatest of all time, I don't. I think all of us that are kind of, uh, ca I don't want to say ca casuals. Yeah, casuals are like, why aren't they? You know, like it, it, it's just because the talent is in abundance now in the league like we've never seen before. Is this the most talented NBA that we've had? Definitely the most talented Western Conference that we had? How do you feel? Is there just more teams that are better than it maybe it used to be? Or why do you – is LeBron – is LeBron ever going to win one again? Uh -oh. What are we – like, what is the thought in this entire thing, Perk? So, so LeBron is definitely not winning one this year, okay? You could cancel Christmas on that shit. That's a chance. <laughs> I, I will say this. I will say this. The league is more exciting. And as we get towards the end, right, we have the MVPs. Right now, Jokic is making a strong, powerful case on why Big Perk should vote for him and break my own rules and my criteria of having the best record in the league, having the best record, being the best player on the best team with the best record. Jokic is, is knocking down that barrier and knocking me off my square with that one with his play. But when you look around the league, you got SGA. He's averaging 30. And and I, I believe it's like, you know, 40 games this season where he scored over 30 plus some type of crazy record. Yep. Luka Doncic is down there in Dallas doing what he does best. What do you have? He had, he had five straight 30-point triple, doubles. triple doubles. In, yes, yeah, that's absurd. insane. Yeah, that is insane. And then you have, you have the Monte Sabonis who's not only been kicking AD ass every time he met, match up with him, but he's been giving the league work. Do you know Sabonis lead the league in triple doubles? Do you know Sabonis lead the league in double doubles? This guy was not an all-star. So you have these caliber players that are putting up these historical numbers night in and night out, playing some exciting basketball, and it's, the league is just in a better place. But look, can I tell you guys something? What? You see the scores, uh -huh. right, of late. They haven't been those 130 mm -hmm. to 145. Hey, we smacking they the been, floor? We they, they, They've been under 500. 
the the referees they swallowed their whistle. They're right. allowing defenders to get a little bit Let's more go. physical. Damn it, we. Okay, that's good news. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that whenever I turn on a game, there's going to be, and not that there is an effort. If you ever go to a live NBA game, I think watching on TV, you get desensitized to how much running yeah. Yeah. and effort is happening yeah. and seemingly passion on the defensive side. When you're watching on TV, you don't get to hear the bench screaming, back screen, mm -hmm. screen, like mm -hmm. actually trying on the defense. You don't hear that. Yeah. When you're at the game, though, you like actually see that. But everybody knows that as the season gets later and games start meaning more, you got six foot seven guys actually showcasing their athletic ability. Somebody mm -hmm. chased, who was it? Zion chased down. No, somebody had a big SWAT the other Zion night. Siakam. S who? Siakam. Oh, yeah. Spicy P, yeah, yeah, the Pacers. Yeah, he chased somebody down. It's like, you're seeing these dudes that are like six foot eight, like jumping 40 inches. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. the defensive side creates some like freak show. The Ann Edwards block. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Where he hits his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He hit his shoulder off the backboard. Absurd. So now, okay, we're in that time now. That's what you're saying. We're in that time right now the season. We're in that time okay, where good. nobody gives a damn. Nailed it. About, nobody gives a damn about embarrassment. That's why you see the chase down blocks, because nobody care about getting dunked on. That's why you see more guys getting hit with crossovers and hezzies and falling to the ground, because – Nobody cares about embarrassment. They're trying to actually defend, and this is what the game needs. Yeah, I agree, and that's a good point. You're talking about game three of the season. <laughs> okay, I'm going against guys who got some hand. Am I? Am I? Okay. Moving. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, you got me. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, all right. Let's get the ball. Let's go down the other way. Yeah, let's do that. Now it's like every single potential could win the game, get mm -hmm. you in the playoffs, win a championship, Bye. get paid, Bye. keep it moving. Bye. Okay, I like that. That's good news, Perk. I love where you're talking. And the guy we love, Tony has a question about. Yeah, Perk, it's been quiet, but Zion has played, I think, like 55 games already this year. He's Ooh. averaging, I think, 23, 6, and 5. Like, he's he's quietly having a really, really good season. I think the Pelicans are the fourth or fifth seed. Like, do they have a chance to make some noise in the playoffs? You ready for this? Yeah. Yep. Like the old people say, and the people down there in Louisiana, Zion balling right bit right now, baby. He's balling, <laughs> and look, he's taking a lot of criticism about his weight, about him being injured, about his availability, right, and so. rightfully so because he made that bet. But this Zion Williamson that we've been seeing over this past over these past couple months, this is the Zion that we've been looking for. This is the Zion before Wimby that we were talking about the next great greatest prospect after LeBron James. This Zion Williamson has a level of accountability. CJ McCullum was on our show on NBA Today and he came out and he said they have uncomfortable conversations in a locker room. And when you're trying to win That's one. I, 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 I heard somebody broke my record. It didn't last long. <laughs> so, so you, but you look at you look at the Pelicans and you look at Zion and, you, and you're saying no team in the West actually want to see them, right? Like, no, you don't want to see them in a matchup. I'm not saying they can't be beat, but it's a reason that I have them as my sleepers. I like that the teammates – kind of were the ones that police Zion, you know? Because yeah. I feel like the media was trying, fans were. I assume front office at the New Orleans Pelicans were trying to, like, get messages across, maybe even coaches. It's not until, like, your boys come up and be like, here's the deal, okay? You can continue doing what you're doing, and you're already rich. They already paid you $100 million. Or, like, we can maybe you know, start actually investing in this entire thing. And it seems like he's enjoying himself, too. I know he loves Dallas. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we've yeah. heard we've heard playing. <laughs> Big fan. Heard, I know yep. we know he loves Dallas. Okay, mm -hmm. he's it's been on the record numerous times. But every time he's on a microphone, he seems like like a little kid joy. Great guy. Like laughing, yeah. like having a good time. So I'm happy that those uncomfortable conversations not only led him to a place where he's playing his best ball and he's most healthy, but also it seems like he's enjoying himself too. That's a win 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 across the board. You know what I mean, Perk? But Pat, but Pat, think about it. To us, as, as former players, the football field, the basketball court, that's supposed to be our sanctuary. We're supposed, to be, we're supposed to have fun. We're supposed to be enjoying those moments. And Zion is actually enjoying the game of basketball. That goes to tell me that all the areas 
that were affecting him and affecting his game, he cleaned that shit up. Yep. And rightfully so, because you have to. Congrats, Zion. Let's go. They were saying he was just going to be a big, fat, slob bust yeah. forever. I wasn't saying it, but you guys were in the NBA like uh -huh. world saying it. Mm -hmm. And boy, it, I think it was Twitter at the time when Zion came into the league and things were happening and made transition into X. They have let their jokes fly. Oh, yeah. They have yeah. let the their floats, yeah, they, they, The floats, the, yeah, the floats, floats are mean spirited. Orleans the were not floats, cool. Those are mean spirited. Yeah. yeah, think about how much time it took to build that float. Oh, I mean, my that's, God. That's like real dedication to being like, well, I'm a dunk on Zion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. being fat, so. Could yeah. stop so many different times while building that. Yeah, get, get tired. Yeah. Because there's numerous, they went to, they put Designs. their, they put the glue down, mm -hmm. went to bed. Had to wake up the next day and say, "Nope, still cooking that fat ass Zion." Yep, exactly. This entire thing, yeah. So that's where he was at one point. Now, seemingly, going to be a guy yep. going forward. We're proud of Zion. Good for Zion.